Welcome to Seeking Out the Next Generation, or SO for short. This is a podcast dedicated to finding young people from all walks of life with interesting experiences and stories to share. Our focus is not on those already in the social media spotlight. Instead, we are seeking out everyday people who we can relate to and whose stories have the potential to inspire us, regardless of what we're doing in our own lives. So, let's get started. I get an adrenaline rush. I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie, so I love that. I love feeling like scared and a tiny bit sick before I go on stage. But um, it's not the same fear of failure now. More, it's this is something I really enjoy. I really like speaking in front of people, and I like the buzz that it gives me. Hi there. I'm your host, David Mar Roberts. This week, our producer Louise Bray meets someone who develops ninja-like public speaking skills early in her life and has quite some impact in the business world and beyond. Netflix or Prime? Netflix. Theatre or cinema? Theatre. Coffee or tea? Tea. Bath or Bristol? Bristol. <laughs> Summer or winter? Uh, winter. Invisible, so this is a superpower. Yeah. Invisible or read people's minds? Read people's minds. Sienna is 16. She lives in Bristol. Okay, you, you might have guessed that. And she just recently finished her GCSEs. She's undoubtedly bright, but she found the first few years of secondary school quite challenging. When I started, I wasn't very happy. Um, I found, I think, it quite hard with friendships. I found um, the whole school atmosphere quite challenging and I think I was quite scared to fail I didn't want to let anyone down I really cared what people thought of me I got quite like stressed about like the tests and stuff like that and that really like bothered me it was the cliques in the hierarchy of school which I sometimes struggled with because um, I've never been good in a fixed group like being these are your friends and not friends with anyone else like this is your group that's never really worked for me or never like sat well with me. I was always very stubbornly me. Sienna was not one to fit into the social hierarchy of secondary school and she seemed happier seeking the company and acceptance of adults more so than of her peers. I think I've always, in a weird way, it sounds kind of sad, but I've always feel more comfortable with adults than I have with people my own age initially because I think there was less of the fear that adults are judging you. Adults don't tend to judge children as much as children judge children. Being happier amongst adults came in part from her being involved with a local amateur theatre group. When she was 10 or 11, Sienna turned up to audition for a part and has been a regular performer with a the theatre group ever since. This is Wendy, who is one of the directors at the St Albans Players Theatre Group. So Sienna, I, rem- I remember quite distinctly, I think Sienna arriving one Sunday afternoon in the church hall where our amateur dramatic group meets and in troops this... I don't know, 10, 11 year old girl, um, maybe even on her bicycle. And she arrived by herself, and I thought that was rather strange. Um, and this guy, girl, but who obviously had the courage to come in alone. And, um, you know, I was struck by that. Her parents had obviously given her the freedom to go out and um, explore something that interested her. And here was this shy, lovely, sweet young girl who arrived, keen and eager to learn all about theatre and theatre making. It really helped me realise that this was something I really, really enjoyed and it was something that gave me the rush and gave me the buzz and I enjoyed learning the lines, I enjoyed being with the people, I enjoyed after the show feeling really sad about it ending. It was just, it taught me about the whole experience of being in a show and performing a play, which was really exciting. Yeah, I haven't found a buzz like I have with acting Mm. in anything else. Yeah, that gives me a real like adrenaline rush before I go on stage and I love it, yeah. Hooked on the adrenaline of performing on stage, Sienna went about looking for other ways to get the same buzz. In year eight or year seven, at the end of year seven, I think I auditioned for the public speaking team. Um, And when I got in, we then rehearsed at lunchtime to then go to a competition. Her English teacher, Miss Pinder, had a big influence on her and helped her develop those public speaking skills. I wrote a speech and she helped me rewrite it and 
and told me how if I was writing an essay it would be like this but because I was writing a speech I didn't need to include that or I could add in this and she helped me present myself and be able to speak to people and answer questions on the spot because part of the competition was you present your argument and then the audience asks you questions so I think she really brought me out of my shell and she helped me find something that I really enjoyed and that I felt confident in doing and I really liked making speeches and presenting and I liked speaking in front of people. This newfound and well-honed skill of hers was put to the test when Sienna and her best friend India entered a school science competition. Me and my friend um, were in a group together in our school science lab and we were asked to come up with a solution to an environmental problem as part of something that the whole school took part in and we came up with the idea of Eat Me and our school did a competition within our school to enter the best ideas into the Big Bang Fair. So me and my friend went to the Big Bang Fair and from there the idea of Eat Me just kind of grew. Eat Me is an app that reminds you when the food in your fridge is about to go off. So it does this by connecting to a scanner that's secured inside your fridge and you scan the um, barcode of the product and that sends the information to an app which will then suggest recipes based on what's in your fridge and Eat Me is also more than just an app it's also a smart fridge so there's a button in your fridge that when you click it it will send you the recipes of that night it will also send you what ingredients you have in your fridge if you double click it and if you hold it it will order your weekly shop for you. So Eat Me started as a school science project and it was then shortlisted for the Big Bang Fair, a national competition in Birmingham for young engineers. In order to attend the two-day conference, Sienna and India had to raise £1,000 from Bristol-based businesses and investors. Lucky they did, because when they got there, they were crowned UK Junior Engineers of the Year. Not once to rest on their laurels, they then applied to one of Europe's biggest tech conferences, VivaTech. They were shortlisted, were granted €4,000 and were invited to Paris to pitch their idea to multinational food corporations. Remember, VivaTech is a full-fat adult startup competition. So the fact that these two schoolgirls ended up beating 19 other startups to win the competition is a testament to them, their idea and how they presented themselves. The girls were on a roll. They applied to Pitch at Palace, which is a pitching competition set up by the Duke of York, and they got through the regional qualifiers. And this is them pitching at the main event in London, November 2017. And now we're here, pitching at the palace. Scared, pretty nervous, but extremely excited. Eat Me is more than just a retrofit scanner, IoT button and an app. Eat Me is making a difference. We are now looking for food industry partners and investors to help us make prototypes to start our user testing. We are 14 years old and on a mission. Eat Me was clearly an idea that captured the imagination, but with India and Sienna still at school, it was only a matter of time before it got superseded by other smart fridge and food management apps. But they still feel their experience with Eat Me has something more to give. Yeah, so we're hoping possibly next year to use it as a story to inspire younger people to come up with the ideas to solve environmental problems, no matter how crazy they are, to get them involved in STEM, because getting young people involved in STEM, I think, is so, so important, because they are the people who are going to help change the world later on, and if they are interested and um, inspired by changing the world for the better, then I think we can only improve as a society. I forgive you if you thought that that was the end of Sienna's story. And if it was, it is bloody impressive. But Sienna's mission to inspire younger people and improve society has led her into the world of politics, where she most recently has been elected Bristol Youth Mayor alongside Mohammed Aided. Bristol Youth Mayor is, well, it's a one-year role, and in essence, we are the mayor's representation for young people. We, we attend a lot of events, we do a lot of speeches, and we also have a monthly meeting with Marvin, the mayor, and we discuss what we think is affecting young people right now. Uh, officially, as youth mayor, my, myself and Sienna both had two campaigns to look at child poverty, and in particular, um, holiday hunger and mind crime. So those are our official campaigns, but I think for me, my focus as youth mayor was to make sure that people who look like me feel represented, because I know that until Marvin came in, I never felt I never, I'd never seen anyone in politics that had looked like me. Um, but even in terms of like, 
yeah, just to make make sure that young people feel represented, that people who look like me also feel represented. Mohammed and Sienna are clearly very much engaged in politics now, and they are on a mission to make a difference. What do they think about how others in their age group can get more engaged and involved? Young people are often patronised, I'd say, in politics, that they don't understand, they haven't lived enough. Young people want to be involved, young people will be involved, they just need to know that they're going to be listened to and that their voice is going to make a difference. And as long as they have that, then I think young people are up for being involved in politics. One of the questions we'd like to ask people on Seeking Out is what their TED Talk would be about. If you don't know what TED is, it's an amazing global platform for sharing inspiring ideas. Go and visit TED.com to have a look. So what would Sienna's TED Talk be about and who would she want to see in the audience? Um, I think the importance of an open dialogue, about the importance of being able to, like freedom of speech almost, being able to express opinions that might be taboo, um, the importance of allowing young people to dialogue with the adults and the people who run a country and being able to make sure that they can help make change in the importance of the youth in our society, basically the importance of everyone in our society and communication between the different groups and sections. Who would be your dream audience member? It could be anyone. Anyone. Um, my dream audience member would probably be Caitlin Moran. I think that'd be quite cool to have her in the audience, whether she agreed with what I said or not. I think having her in the audience and I think she inspired my my interest in talking about subjects that other people don't necessarily talk about. Um, my mum gave me her book, How to Be a Woman, when I was, I think, 13 or 14. Um, and I read that book and that was, um, that book really inspired me. That was a book that talked really honestly and unapologetically about all things to do with being a woman from uh, periods to sex to um, getting fat to relationships to um, shaving to hair to literally anything that you could think of she talked about it in a non preachy way it was a comedic story almost of her life and that book was like I've never read a book like that before and I would never heard someone talk so like publicly and openly and just unapologetically with no filter about everything and that really inspired me. Hi Sienna, welcome back. Hi. So at the end of every episode what we really like to do is is call people back that we've been talking um, about and to and and invite them to be um, to become like an official seeker of the next generation, and and that really has two meanings. It's like the first one is we we like if you can to sort of look out for other uh, potential uh, people that might have interesting stories to tell and maybe introduce them to us in the future. Yeah. And and the second bit is really we 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 wonder whether you have a mantra or or a, a series of quotes or something that, that you use to sort of guide your life a little bit so that you could share that with us um, so we get a sense of, of, of what you're all about. Yeah, so I would say we care too much, especially at my age, as like teenagers, you care so much about what everyone thinks of you and uh, what other people are thinking about what you do and how you look in certain situations. Um, and something that I think my mum said to me once was just dance in your pants. So just dance in your pants in your bedroom, in the kitchen. And for me, that's just something that I just think about. And it's just something just let go, just be free and just make sure that you know that you're the person who's important and you don't have to worry about like what other people think of you all the time. I think that's fantastic. You put a massive smile on my face when you actually said that. I just that's one of the best. I've never heard that one, but that is that is one of the best uh, uh, mantras I think I've ever heard. Dance in your pants. Gosh, I think we can all if we could all dance in our pants and just not worry about what everybody else thinks, it would be uh, a much better place. And we, I guess, our mental health would be in a way better state generally. Yeah, when I'm having a really bad day, it really helps. It really helps. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much um, for that and. Uh, we would hope in, in a future episode at some point we would check back in with you to see how, how you're doing. 
Yeah, that would be really nice. Thank you. Cool. Special thanks to Sienna, Wendy and Mohammed for giving us their time for this episode. Our producer was Louise Bray. Speak to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Seeking Out. If you would like to nominate someone who you think would have a great story to share in a future episode, please get in touch with us via Instagram, Twitter or on our website, seekingout.fm. We have many more stories to tell, so please subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Google Play or anywhere else you get your podcast from. And if you like what you hear, it would be great if you gave us a five-star rating. It really helps with people finding us. Seeking Out is supported by Dialect, the content and media agency that specialises in the art and science of audience engagement. 